Hello and welcome to Archie Corner. This is episode number seven. Actually, this is an update version of episode number seven, and it is titled "ADA Size and Clearance Requirements for Doors." Video number seven has received the most requests to be updated and more thorough. So this video touches on all clearances, not just the front approaches. So let's get started. Let's get the door sizes out of the way. This is pretty simple. First, let's talk about the width. Door openings need to provide a minimum clear of 32 inches. If this is a swinging door, the 32 inch clearance is measured when the door is in the open position at 90 degrees, and is measured between the face of the door and the door stop. If this is a pocket door, it is measured between the end face of the door and the door stop. As you can imagine, this means that the actual door width has to be more than 32 inches. In most commercial applications, 36 inch doors will be used for swinging doors. And for pocket doors, well, <laughs> that's a bit difficult to say because each manufacturer is different. So be sure to coordinate that with the manufacturer. Now let's discuss heights. Minimum door height clearances must be 80 inches, which is 6 foot 8. One exception is that door closers and door stops are allowed to be at 78 inches above the finished floor, or 6 foot 6 inches. That pretty much covers your door sizing requirements. Now let's move on to clearances. Let's first get some terminology out of the way. Here you see a door in the floor plan view. On one side of the door you have your hinge side. On the other side of the door you have the latch side. You also have your pull side and your push side. With those terms out of the way, you can see that you can approach a door in at least six different ways. Front approach on the pull side, hinge approach on the pull side, and latch approach on the pull side. There's also front approach on the push side, hinge approach on the push side, and latch approach on the push side. Let's start with the required clearances for the different pull sides of the door. When approaching from the front pull side, parallel to the doorway between the latch side, there has to be 18 inches minimum clear. Perpendicular to the doorway, the door must have a 60 inch minimum clear. When approaching from the latch side, parallel to the doorway beyond the latch door, there has to be 24 inches minimum clear. Perpendicular to the doorway, the door must have 48 inches minimum clear. There is an exception. If the door is provided with a closer, 54 inches minimum clear is required. When approaching from the hinge side, parallel to the doorway beyond the latch side, there has to be 36 inches minimum clear. Perpendicular to the doorway, the door must have a 60 inch minimum clear. There are alternative options for this. Parallel to the doorway beyond the latch side, there has to be 42 inches minimum clear. Perpendicular to the doorway, the door must have a 54 inch minimum clear. Either option is acceptable. It is up to you to decide which one to use. And that covers the pull side. Now let's move on to the options for the push side. When approaching from the front push side, perpendicular to the doorway, the door must have 48 inches minimum clear. Parallel to the doorway beyond the latch side, there is no requirement for clearances beyond the latch side. However, there is one exception. If the door is provided with both a closer and it latches, then the door must have 12 inch minimum clear beyond the latch side. When approaching from the latch side, parallel to the doorway beyond the latch side, there has to be 24 inches minimum clear. Perpendicular to the doorway, the door must have a 42 inch minimum clear. There is an exception. If the door is provided with a closer, 48 inches minimum clear perpendicular to the doorway is required. Now last, when approaching from the hinge side, parallel to the doorway beyond the hinge side, there has to be 22 inches minimum clear. Perpendicular to the doorway, the door must have a 42 inch minimum clear. However, there is one exception here as well. If the door is provided with both a closer and a latch, then the door must have 48 inch minimum clear perpendicular to the doorway. Man, that was a lot of numbers in there. Anyway, as you can imagine, 
There are times when you can decide whether you use a front approach, latch approach, or hinge approach. However, there is one item in this regard that we should touch upon. This has to do with recessed doors. In a scenario such as the one you see drawn here, you can still pick whatever option works best. However, there comes a time when you no longer have that option to pick. The ADA is specific in noting that if a door is recessed more than 8 inches, then you must have a front approach. A hinge or latch approach is no longer acceptable. This is true for both the push side and the pull side of the door. And that is all for basic ADA clearances required for doors. Since I live in California, I know that the building code in Chapter 11 has added a few more things beyond the ADA requirements. And that may be the case in your state too. So be sure to check your state code as well. If you like this video, please share it with others. Subscribe and leave a comment and don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If there are other subjects that you would like to see in this channel, leave it in the comments. Perhaps it'll be one of the future videos. Here are a couple of videos that you may like. Click on them and keep learning. But for now, this is Archie Corner signing out.